In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make copies of objects. And this also works for other things like textures or materials. Um, but in this case, we'll just do um, objects. So I'm going to go ahead and make a box here. And Max is unique um, in the way it makes copies. It actually calls it cloning. Uh, and if you go to edit um, clone, you can see Control-V is what you'd imagine copy to be uh, paste in most programs. But to make a copy, there's a few ways you can do it. You can select the object. You can just go to Edit Clone, Control-V. And then it gives you the option to make a copy, which would just be a copy of the object like you're used to, or an instance or a reference. An instance in 3ds Max um, is a copy of the object, but it retains linked characteristics. So for example, if I bend one object, it'll bend the other object. Um, a reference is similar to an instance, but it allows you to control when that linking occurs. And I'll, I'll explain that in a second. So the first thing we'll do is just make a copy. OK, and then we can move the copy over. It always makes a copy directly on top of itself. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, I can go ahead and go to Edit Clone and make another copy, and this time an instance. But there's another way to do it. You can also select the Move tool, hold down Shift on your keyboard, and then copy in the direction, move in the direction you want to copy. So if I want to move um, in this X direction, I can just drag on that arm, and it will make a copy automatically. When I let go, it asks me, um, what options to use. And the one nice thing about this method is that you can actually increase the number of copies that you want to do. You don't get that option if you just do edit copy or edit clone. So that's kind of nice. So if I want to make two, for example, I could do two. In this case, I'll just do one. We'll make this an instance. I'll say OK. And then let's make one more copy. So I'll hold down Shift, drag in the X direction, make another copy, and we'll do a reference for this one. So we have our original, our copy, our instance, and our reference. If I go back to the original and I go over here to the Modify uh, tab and I change parameters, you'll notice it only changes parameters of that initial box um, because that was just a copy of that box. Now for this one, I made an instance of this copy. So if I come over here and I change uh, the parameters of this object, it'll actually change the parameters for both the instance and the reference of that geometry. So this is nice if I come over here to my modifier list and let's say I add like a bend modifier and I bend the geometry, it's going to apply all those transformations to all of the other objects that are linked to it. Um, one thing that's kind of um, nice is if I, let's just right click on this and delete that um, bend modifier. If I select this, you'll notice that the word over here in the modifier stack is bold. And that means it's linked to other objects. If I select this one, it's not. And so it's just a regular font. But if I select this, you can see it's bold and it's connected to these two. If you ever want to break, break a linkage, you can't add one later on, but you can break it. And if you want to break it, you can right click where it says box and you can select make unique. That will then break the linkage to these two boxes. So now this is a unique copy. So if I change parameters, it's now independent of the other two. Now these two are still linked because they were. this was a reference of this instance. So if I go back here and change dimensions, it'll also change the reference. Now let's say I go in here and I add a bend modifier. Um, it's going to apply that to both of those. If I then select the reference, you'll notice you get this bar, which is a little different from the instance. It doesn't have that. So the bar allows you to basically, anything below the bar is linked, anything above the bar is not. So if I add a bend modifier to this geometry, it's going to apply it, let's change the axis so we can see it a little bit better. Um, it's going to apply it only to that reference geometry if that modifier was applied above the bar. Modifier stacks are really flexible, so if I want to change the order of operations, I can just select this bend, hold down my left mouse button, and drag it below the bar. If I drag it below the bar, it's going to apply it to both of those objects. So again, anything above the bar will only be on the reference. Anything below the bar will be on any object that's linked to it. So it's a little bit different than the way other programs do copying, but it is a lot more powerful in what it can do.